What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com coming to you from Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium where it's freezing and Arkansas just lost 52-3 to to number one ranked Alabama. And I'll tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do like what I've seen with a bunch of people on Twitter and social media. Why are there chairs here? This isn't going to be a sit and bitch. I'm not going to sit here and bitch about Arkansas sucks, Barry Odom sucks, Sam Pittman sucks, because I don't believe that. I don't believe that that's the state of this program right now. No, you can't be pleased with what just happened in there. You can't feel encouraged. You can't feel satisfied. None of those emotions should be coming out of you right now. Arkansas just got their ass whipped, okay? And as I've said before, it's not all on this coaches. It wasn't all on Chad Morris back in the day. It's not all on this coaching staff. It's not all on these players. It takes a lot of hard damn work, as I like to say, to get the program in the state that it's in. But if we look at the overall state of this program, they won three SEC games, and they just got smoked by the number one team in the country. They didn't play well. We'll get into all that stuff, but I'm not gonna be like some loser on Twitter who wants you to say everybody sucks and it's over. That's not what this state needs. It's not what this program needs. Things have gotta get turned around, and I think they've got the right people in place to do it. This is not indicative of that, Again, nobody should be satisfied or happy or pleased, but it's where the program is right now. They've got to recruit their way out of it. They're never going to beat a team like Alabama, and no disrespect to the guys out there that are busting their ass, but they got to get bigger up front on the offensive line. they got to get more depth. I think COVID affects a team more. What's up, Basil? Hey, I think COVID affects a team more like Arkansas when, you know, as Sam Pittman was saying afterwards, you know, Friday you piece your team together. And that may sound like an excuse, and maybe it is, but it's where this program is. They're not going to compete with a team like Alabama until they get better depth and get bigger up front, especially on the offensive line. I mean, you basically can't do anything against a team like that. And we can point to the score like 52-3. That's what, you know, we've seen that before. You know, this is nothing's changed. They could have beaten Arkansas 80-3 to today if they wanted to. I mean, they, they took their foot off the pedal. They want to get out of there. They want to get to the championship game. <sighs> yeah, it sucks. It sucks that this is where the program is. But I think, you know, Pittman's right. You can't define where they are as a program by this one game because I've seen a lot of heart and I've seen a lot of fight. And I think, I think a big reason that, you know, they have had this four-game skid, a lot of it comes down to depth. They can't afford to lose a guy here and there. You know, we talk about the offensive line. They're without Ricky Stromberg. They're without Bo Limmer. They're without Noah Gatlin. I mean, three of their best five offensive linemen, they're without. They also can't be – what's up? Thank you. They also can't be without um, – you know, they can't be the team that, that commits eight penalties. You know, when what, Alabama had two? You know, there are certain things you – know, like, if you want to talk about what's really disappointing, for me, we're going to move past the personnel to get there, okay? We're going to go to special teams, okay? Special teams, which has been awful all year. I mean, it, it, that's the thing, like, that changed the whole momentum of the game. Now, if it wasn't that, it might have been something else because Alabama's just the kind of team that does that. They make you pay for everything. You look up and suddenly you're down four touchdowns. You don't even know what happened. But special teams, turnovers and penalties, those are things that you can control. And Arkansas, I mean, they didn't control it, obviously. they, they they lost all three phases of that. They had four turnovers to one. They had eight penalties, I think, to two. And uh, special teams were atrocious again. And, you know, even things like having a, a kick blocked, you know, like when you're playing Missouri and you have a kick blocked, hello. even something like that can just take so much momentum away from you. You know, you finally get down there and score. You've been down. You score. You're feeling good. And it's like it's just deflating. They missed the extra point. You know, and in this one, you know, you just have a, a situation where he kicks it right to a Heisman Trophy candidate. He almost gets the kick blocked in the first place and kicks it right to a Heisman Trophy candidate and zoom. The, all the energy that was in that building got sucked out. And there was some, there was some energy. There were some positive vibes. Um, you could see it on the defensive side mostly. And then when that happened, it was just like, whew, just deflated. And you saw the energy go away. Something like that changes the whole outcome of the game. And I don't agree with, with putting KJ in when they did in that, what, third series. 
Uh, you had two false starts. You know, you've got a new center in there. You've got a new quarterback. I, I, I absolutely think all that played a hand with having two false starts and getting things backed up on them. So that was kind of a turning point moment of the game. But if it wasn't that, guys, it would have been another moment. Alabama's just got too much. I mean, that team out there, like when we talk about offensive line, like you take Arkansas's offensive line and you stack them up to those guys. And the thing of it is, if those guys go down, they've got some other guys behind them almost as good. Maybe some of them will even be better one day. I mean, that's it's just it's two different programs. Now, if Arkansas is ever going to be able to compete with a team like Alabama, and they're probably not going to get to a point where they have the depth where they could just afford to lose a guy here or there like they can, but they've got to get 22 out there on defense and a lot more on offense too. I mean, like skill guys and stuff like that, I feel like you know they're in a place where they can compete. And Arkansas has been like that before, but the, it's got to be the offensive line. You know, I think back to you know some of the offensive lines, like when Brandon Allen was at Arkansas, and you had you know Denver Kirkland and Dan Skipper and Sebastian Tertola, Frank Ragnow, Mitch Smothers. You know, that's a hell of an offensive line. It's not an Alabama offensive line. It's not the offensive line that Alabama has out there, but it's a it's an offensive line that can, you know, get Arkansas to the next level. So they have to continue to recruit. They have to continue to bring in players, um, you know, on both sides of the ball. They, they can't have the situation that they're in at linebacker. They can't have the situation, you know, at, at defensive line. They can't, you know, just have guys leave and opt out and, um, you know, all of those kinds of things to compete with a team like Alabama. I do think they're going to get to a bowl game, I guess. Hell, I don't know. I think they're going to a bowl game. And, you know, they get basically, as Pittman was saying, a spring football. You know, and that'll be big for these young guys. But they've got to continue to get the guys developed that they have. They still are pretty young on the offensive line, but they got to get bigger through recruiting. There's just so many things that they've got to fix. So, so I'm not listening to Sam Pittman sucks or he's never going to get it done or Barry Odom sucks and, and all this stuff, you know. Special teams, yeah, special teams has sucked. They, they have sucked. I will entertain that. I'll listen to that. But I also understand that, you know, COVID can play a role in that too with mixing things up and, you know, you don't know who your personnel is and, you know, Pittman's talking about all that stuff. But, I, I you know, at the same time, everybody's dealing with that. I think Arkansas, from a depth standpoint, it hurts them a little bit more. So 443 yards for Alabama to 188. They could have had more if they wanted to. I think the thing that was disappointing for you mostly, I mean, there's a lot of things, right? But but like the end of the game, you know, Alabama's trying to put it away. You know, they're, they're ready to get out of there and they break an 80 yard touchdown run. You know, that was disappointing. They spotted them 14 points with, uh, with Franks' fumble down there at the goal line in the shadow of his own end zone. Um, the punt return for a touchdown. You know, there's 31 points for the defense. If you could take those, you can't take them away. But if you could, you know, that's how you can beat a team and compete with a team like Alabama, just giving up 31 points on defense. Again, you know, at the end of the game, when it was, you know, when they went up, they were just trying to put the game away. They weren't taking deep shots or anything like that. So Arkansas only had 188 yards of offense, 108 passing, 80 rushing, not very good. Um, KJ, see KJ, I'm not even sure what KJ's final numbers were, but I think he was like one of six passing. Um, Felipe was actually pretty accurate as a passer, but the difference between, it's, it's kind of like, I feel like this like throughout Arkansas history, it's like if you could take this player and that player and combine them a little bit, because I do feel like KJ feels it a little bit better, feels the rush, um, and Felipe, you know, takes a lot of sacks. Arkansas was sacked eight times for I can't remember how many yards, but eight sacks, is just that's, that's just not going to get it done, people. Uh, they had 10 tackles for loss. I mean, there are a lot of bad numbers when you look at this. I mean, really, like everything except for yards co for completion, and that's just kind of a weird deal that it worked out that way. But, like, if you look at, like, every single statistic, Alabama just dominated Arkansas in this game. So it's not a sitting bitch. It's a walk and talk. Walking talks are good to get things out of your system, help you move on. And I'm not gonna dwell on this one too much. I mean, I think my, my score prediction, uh, being optimistic in it, like if things fell right, was 
and that's Arkansas losing by four touchdowns. You know, if you get lucky. So anybody who expected Arkansas to go into this game and, and actually win were just fooling themselves. Arkansas is not in that situation. They're not in that, they're not in that place right now. They got to get a few more Jalen Catalans on defense. They got to get bigger on the offensive line, continue to recruit skill guys, continue to develop. At some point, hopefully, this COVID stuff gets behind us. And I look for brighter things for Arkansas, I really do. You know, at this point in the Chad Morris era, I was not feeling much hope for this program, not feeling much at all. And even in light of a 52-3 loss, I still feel like there is some. I don't feel good right now. I'm not happy about it. I'm not, I'm not telling you it's okay, because it's not. But there's a lot more than just this one team. Look at the stadium. This got Arkansas in the situation that they're in. All right, everybody. I don't have much else to say. I hope that wasn't too optimistic for some of you people, but I'm just not going down that road today. And I really think as a state, you got to get behind this team. I mean, you can't have this divisiveness, especially after one year. And I'm just telling you, my personal opinion is, I don't want to say it's not that bad, but I think that it's going to get better. I don't know when. I don't know how long it'll take, but it'll get there. They have won three SEC games this year, which they haven't done in four years. So keep it in perspective and uh, stick together, stay behind these guys, and uh, don't act like an asshole on Twitter. All right, everybody. It's been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. We'll catch you next time.